Hi, everybody. Welcome to Beyond the Frame Live. My name is Dottie San Martin, and today we are going to talk about string machines and competitive polling. With me, I have as my guest, Neil Pennington. Neil has been with Cubica AMF for 15 years, and he is the Director of, Pro of Product Management for, for Performance Equipment for Cubica AMF. Boy, that's a mouthful. Um, <laughs> well, welcome, Neil. How are you today? I'm doing great. How about you, Dottie? I'm, I'm doing really well. You know, Neil, over the past few weeks, it's been really interesting. Here on Beyond the Frame, we've We've talked to many proprietors and we've learned that the first ones to come back into the center upon reopening are the competitive bowlers. They just want to bowl. They want to compete. They're our diehard bowlers. And, you know, that's neat. That's just really nice to see that they just want to get back to the basics and get back to being competitive. So we're gonna jump right in, uh, Neil, and get started with this, because I am really anxious to learn what you've got to tell us today. Um, tell us a little bit about string machines and why there's been so much interest in them recently. Yeah, um, so string machines, they've been, they were actually, string machines were invented back in the early 1960s. Um, and they've been used uh, kind of in more niche applications, uh, 10 pin bowling applications in, in Europe and duck pin applications in Canada. Um, but recently they really have, uh, have grown uh, and been more widely adopted. Um, I mean, I can tell you that, you know, at Cubic AMF, 90% of the new center uh, builds, the new center bowling projects over the past four years have been uh, string pin spotters. And uh, actually last year, um, about 45% of our string pin spotter sales were to um, existing centers replacing their free fall machines. Um, and, and, and really what's driving that is, um, is really just um, a few, uh, some challenges around older free fall machines. Uh, specifically uh, finding, uh, finding technicians is becoming hard. Um, it's, you know, we hear that you know, wherever I go, uh, no matter where in the world, you know, talk to folks, that's a problem. Um, it's just hard to find the folks that have those skills and people aren't, younger people aren't stepping in to really to learn that. Uh, and then delivering a, a great bowling experience, you know, is the second challenge that you can't find good technicians, you can't keep your machines running, then the experience suffers. And then the operational costs associated with the, uh, the free fall machines, especially the older ones, um, it's just, you know, challenging. And so stream machines are a good solution. Um, they're just a lot simpler, um, you know, they make operations a little less, less difficult. Absolutely, and you know, uh, not only is it getting harder to find those experienced mechanics, but when you do, you know, they're one of your highest paid employees, and so you incur a lot of expense that way as well. So um, something to definitely keep in mind. Uh, tell us a little bit about the operational cost of pin centers and how edge string can help centers actually be more profitable. Yeah, so so um, so you know when you when you look at a bowling center operations, um, the pin spotter operations um, th they can cost anywhere between two and a half thousand to four thousand um, dollars per lane per year, and that's typically the the labor time involved, the parts, the electricity consumption. Um, in addition to that, um, most centers have on average somewhere between four hundred and six hundred dollars. Uh, per lane worth of spare parts inventory. So there's a lot of money that's tied up there. Um, and so when you when you look at, at string machines can can reduce typically the, the pin spotter operating cost of a bowling center by about 50% um, at least is, is what we've seen. Um, and you know, I wanna point out that, you know, string pin spotters are very much easier to maintain. They require less maintenance and less frequent maintenance. Um, however, they still require uh, a technician. You know, I don't, don't want folks to think that you don't need anybody. It's just the skill level of that person is, is, is not the same as a traditional pin spider technician. And even, um, you know, we've had customers with edge string pin spiders that have replaced their free fall machines. And I mean, they've kept their, their good technicians and they just kind of reimagined the job to take on um, other things in the facility and, and kind of help the overall facility and business. Um, you know, and, and so, you know, if you've got good technicians, you can kind of, re, you know, they, they can be um, utilized in other ways. 
And also, um, but just again, if you can't find and you're struggling, then the string machines really help there. Um, an edge string, we really, we developed it from ground up. It's only got three adjustments. Um, we developed a really cool um, application called Tech Wizard that goes on the smartphone and it tells you anything you need to know about the machine. It tells you when you need to do maintenance. It shows you how to do it through videos. Um, it, it lets you know if there's ever any kind of operational attention that the machine needs. So you can pretty much forget about edge string until Tech Wizard tells you, you know, you need to do something. Oh, wow. That is that is fantastic. And, you know, it really does open up the opportunity for uh, more, you know, right now what we're seeing is a lot of centers are offering sweepers and, and I call them flash tournaments, little uh, quickly put together tournaments, say, after league or in the late evening. And, you know, you don't have to worry as much about making sure that you have an experienced mechanic available at really off peak times for you that you're trying to draw an extra business. So that's, you know, really nice that that uh, you don't have to depend on the high level of experience all the time now when you have, you know, different events in the center. Let me ask you this, Neil, what is the guest experience like um, on Edge Stream? Um, so I mean, we've, we've got a lot of feedback from folks who bowled on the machines. Um, you know, I want to say that, that, you know, some people may have bought on string pin spiders. They've been around for a long time. Um, you know, edge string is a completely new, new machine. So, you know, if you've if never bought on edge string, you need, to, you need to check it out. It's, you know, it takes that guest experience to the next level. Um, it's extremely reliable. Um, and you can't, you know, we've, we've designed it such that the strings are pretty much hidden from view. Um, so you really, you know, when we've talked to recreational bowlers and a lot of times they don't even realize the pins are attached to strings. Um, and, and even the competitive bowlers, um, and we'll talk a little bit about the tournament we hosted this weekend, but, you know, we got a lot of good feedback there on the machines and the experience also. Um, it's incredibly reliable. So that's one of the other issues we've seen is, you know, with, if, if you can't maintain your older machines, your free fall machines, sometimes the bowling experience is not as good. Guests get turned away. Um, you know, say it's a busy night and you've got lanes down, you know, even even on leagues, busy league nights and your league bowlers have to wait or be, you know, move lanes, things like that. So with that string, you, you don't get that. It's extremely reliable. Um, one of our customers in the UK, um, uh, um, second largest chain in the UK called Tenpen, they actually, they've been putting in our, our string pin spotters uh, for the past few years. They've had a 250% increase in games bowled without pin spotter stops since wow. doing that. A uh, 63% yeah, decrease in guest refunds. So they were actually having to, you know, give, give money back uh, to folks from, because of uh, poor experiences. Um, and actually their lane utilization, um, you know, so uh, is up 8%. So they, they're not turning away um, folks due to lanes being down. Um, and overall, that translates to a 5% increase in revenue. So, I mean, not only can string pin spotters in an edge string save you operational costs, it can also help drive up that, uh, that top line revenue too. Well, and, and you know, as you said, um, with, with less of an issue on the lanes, that also equates to better social media uh, you know, the buzz in social media is more positive. And so you're getting, you know, positive advertising out of it, as opposed to if you've got a group coming in and their lane goes down, we all know that the negative publicity that you can get in social media is very detrimental to, to the overall center itself. So oh, yes. Uh, one of our, one of our EdStream customers, uh, Woodlawn Bowl um, in Canada, they, um, they're a heavy league center and um, they were having um, trouble finding uh, good qualified technicians. They couldn't keep their machines running well. Uh, and the owner actually noticed um, his, his social media rating has um, it dropped. Uh, he was around three out of three stars out of five. And um, he, you know, he's afraid about afraid of losing customers. He installed Ed String. Uh, six months later, his social media rating had gone from that three up to uh, like a four and a half out of five. Oh, so that's fantastic. Trending the right direction. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's talk a little bit about competitive play. Are string machines being used in competitive play environments? Yes, they are. Um, yes. Um, you know, we've, we've, um, so several countries have actually sanctioned uh, string machines for competitive play. Um, Canada, the UK and Australia 
um, did this uh, a year or two ago. Um, and cubic AMF uh, string pin spotters um, are being used in competitive play in those countries. Um, thousands of games a day are being bowled um, at centers on, on our machines. And Ed String, when we uh, set out to design this machine uh, from the ground up, we looked at you know, things that we could do to make it a better machine for competitive play. Um, you know, we designed um, the machine dimensions to comply with um, US, what USB-C controls on freefall machines. So it meets all of the specifications there as far as dimensions and, and uh, materials and things like that. Um, it also uses our standard Amflight bowling pin. So it uses the standard pin. The only difference is a small hole in the top. How, that's how the string is attached mm -hmm. to it. Um, and also we put in some pretty cool technology we developed to allow the string movement. So the strings uh, don't inhibit pin, pin movement, pin action. Um, we tried to uh, you know, really make it as close to free fall as possible. Now there are, you know, because there are strings there, you're gonna see some different, uh, some different shots and things that folks aren't used to, but it, it's about as close as you can get to a free fall. Yes. And the sound is there too, and I'm a fanatic about the sound. So. Definitely, the sound is there. It sounds good. It sounds good, when you hit, especially when you hit a hit the pocket like you're supposed to, and you get a strike. That's it, absolutely. Well, you had mentioned about the tournament this weekend uh, that Cubica AMF um, was a part of some string some strings attached invitational. Can you share um, a little bit about that tournament? Tell us a little bit about um, what was going on. Yeah, it was a great, it was a fun event. Um, we hosted it down at uh, Headpins uh, Naples in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, we had um, about 70 bowlers um, over the two days. And uh, it was really fun. I mean, everybody had a great time. We had positive feedback. Um, people were just thankful to, to be back and, you know, bowling in the center and bowling in, in a tournament. And um, it was, the, we actually made history doing it because it's the world's first combination string and free fall tournament. Um, and really the idea behind it was we wanted to get some top bowlers together to have fun and to get the, their feedback on the, on the edge string pin spotter and also to collect some scoring data to see how, um, you know, the, the edge string scores overall compared to uh, free fall machines. Right. And, um, you know, the, actually the, the, the data came back, um, came back really, really exceptional. Um, we bowled um, 670 games um, between free fall and string, an equal amount. So 335 games on free fall, 335 games on string. The bowlers rotated across those uh, those machines. And um, at the end of the the, uh, the two day tournament, um, we had uh, the 203.4 was the average on free fall, and 204.7 was the average on edge string. So it was a plus 1.3 difference. So amazingly close. I mean, it was, it was, uh, you know, on the string machine, sometimes how you get there is a little different, but at the end, the, the overall scores um, were virtually identical. Oh, absolutely. And did you have any feedback from any of the players themselves? Uh, we did. We got a lot of good feedback. We're still going through all of that. I mean, um, of course. but, um, you know, over 97% of the bowlers that participated said that they would participate on another, uh, another edge string tournament. Um, Very so that nice. was great, that was great. Very nice. Well, good, okay, so I've, I've learned a lot. And, and for me, I mean, you know, uh, the finding a great mechanic and putting them in place and uh, the expenses involved with free fall machines. I mean, this is definitely uh, where the future is going and is gonna solve so many problems. So. I, I'm really excited about um, this product and where it's going to take bowling in the future. And uh, Neil, before we end today, I, I just want to ask you, what are the top three things that you would like our viewers to take away from, from our conversation today? Yeah, I think, um, you know, the first thing is just that, um, you know, string pin spiders, as I mentioned, have been around a while, um, you know, if, you know, but, They've, you know, they've changed, they've grown. Um, so if you haven't bowled on a string machine in a while, check one out, especially the edge string um, you know, being brand new and designed from the ground up, um, check it out. Um, it's the experience on this machine. I mean, um, again, we've had very positive, you know, folks that bowl on it, they really enjoy it. The reliability is, is, um, is, is amazing. And just, you know, also just lastly, kind of think about the cost. I think, 
um, these machines can really help our centers um, that do struggle with uh, with 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 those those uh, operational costs that we talked about and reliability can help them be more profitable and uh, help help bowling in general be uh, be sustainable um, long term and just really make make us more successful you know as a, as an industry and and, um, and so I think absolutely and you know especially. Uh, at the time that we are right now with our centers coming out of being closed for months. And, you know, we, we've really taken and looked at our business through uh, a, a fine, you know, a, a magnifying glass to find where we had opportunities to really, uh, you know, cut down and, and save. And so this has been very helpful and, and the timing is, is great because there's, we're looking for those opportunities to do it better and to save and to make the experience for our bowlers even better, uh, which I think we can all agree that that is the uh, end result from edge stream machines. Yeah. Well, well Neil, thank you uh, so much for joining us today. Do you have any uh, closing remarks that you want to leave us with? Um, no, just uh, thank everybody uh, who tunes in and, uh, and um, yeah, you know, I just, Again, to the tournament this weekend, it was really exciting and invigorating to see people bowling, and um, you know, and just they were so happy and to, to be out having fun, and it, it, that that excites me to know that you know, even in situations today where you know, in some places we can't, people can't go, can't get back in the centers again, but the but the, we know we know they want to, you know, and so I, I think um, you know we'll we'll get through this soon, and and it just it was just exciting and motivating to see people back in the center and having fun at the tournament. Yes, I, I agree. And for those that did not get to watch the tournament live, I have put a uh, link in the comment section of this live stream. So make sure if you have not had a chance to, to check it out to do so. Uh, and then also, I just want to remind our viewers of the different resources that we have available. Uh, if you've not had an opportunity to watch some of the webinars and are still interested, you can find our recorded webinars on our YouTube channel. Uh, and that can be found on the Cubica AMF customer resource page, right from the Cubica AMF homepage. Also, if you are curious and want to know a little bit more, I know we didn't have a whole lot of time today, and you've just got a teaser of how great um, it is to have stream machines. So if you would like some more information, uh, you can certainly go to the Cubic AMF website uh, and uh, click on the Edge Stream, and you can bring up, I think there's some videos and a brochure and a number of other resources. Uh, so make sure that you visit those resources. And uh, next week, I'm sorry, on Thursday on Beyond the Frame, we are going to be joined by uh, David J, one of our Max training specialists. And he's going to chat with us about the positive changes and opportunities uh, through a trainer's eyes. So you won't want to miss that. Um, he's going to take us on that journey. And then also coming up on August the 12th, we're going to have a fantastic webinar. Um, that webinar is going to be uh, the future of competitive bowling. And we're going to be uh, joined by some, some uh, top names in our industry that are going to share with us what the future of competitive play might look like. So make plans to join that. Uh, and until next time, again, Neil, I want to say thank you very much for enlightening us today and sharing with us uh, the beauty of string machines. Yeah, thank you, Dottie. I appreciate you uh, bringing me on to your show. And um... Absolutely. And for all of you out there, until next time, I just want to remind you, let's just keep thinking beyond the frame and keep the creativity and the determination that are we're seeing right now when centers start to come back online and reopen and let's get those customers back through our door. So hope everyone has a wonderful afternoon and thanks for joining us. Thank you.